What's happening everybody? This is Jim from JCRC. I figured I would do a little uh, update slash repair video on the WL Toys 10428A. In a previous video I had broken um, a front CV pin and I replaced those CV pins with uh, pieces of an Allen wrench. And after replacing them with the Allen wrench I proceeded to break further, I proceeded to break other drivetrain parts further on down the line um, all in the front end and everything that had to do with the front differential. Um, I had broken a uh, drive shaft on the passenger side where the dog bone meets the wheel spindle, sheared it off right there, and where the outdrive comes off the transmission on the driver's side of the vehicle, uh, the dog bone cup, I split that in half and uh, broke one half of the cup completely off. Um, but my Allen wrench pieces still held up because they were, you know, stronger than the WL Toys uh, material. Um, the WL Toys plastic is uh, relatively soft, it strips out relatively easy, and the screw heads and screws are uh, extremely soft as well. Um, they strip out relatively easy as well, along with the wheel pins. All the pins that go through the axle shafts for the wheel hexes and that go through the um, all the little gears in the differential and um, everywhere else on the vehicle, they're extremely soft. Um, when I replaced them with the Allen wrench, I was able to cut through um, one of the stock pins with a pair of wire cutters and these are the wire cutters right here and with one hand I was able to cut through the stock pins that go through the wheel studs and through the CV joints uh, when I replaced those stock pins with the Allen wrenches I attempted to cut the Allen wrench or cut a piece of the Allen wrench off with these wire cutters and I, I could just barely make a dent on it I was, wasn't able to cut through them I, I actually had to use a pair of uh, tin, tin snips or tin shears uh, to cut through the Allen wrench, uh, you know, so they're obviously a lot stronger than the stock pins that went through here. And like I said, after replacing those with the Allen wrench, I proceeded to break other parts further down the line. And these are the shears that I used to cut the Allen wrench. I had to use two hands to snip through the Allen wrench. So the Allen wrench was significantly stronger than the stock pins. Just figured I'd show you the shears that I had to use to cut through it. Alright, so nevertheless, I ordered a bunch of replacement parts for this truck. I ordered an entire screw kit for Viterra Twin Hammers. Stainless steel screw kit. Uh, just like I said, the screw heads strip out relatively easy, so I figured I'd replace it all up with some brand new screws. I also ordered some uh, Viterra front differential outdrives. For driver side and passenger side of the differential. Some Viterra, I believe these are extreme duty or heavy duty uh, front and half shafts or drive shafts. A Viterra front differential cup. A traditional locker for the front differential instead of using JB Weld. And a whole front differential rebuild kit. So I got all that stuff and I'm going to proceed to tear this baby apart. Alrighty, we got the body off it, we got the wheels off of it. You can see the damage to that front differential outdrive right there that was split in half. And this drive shaft over on this side is broken completely off. Uh, trying to get the camera to focus on it, but regardless, you can see that that's completely broken off there. Alright, so the next thing I need to do is pull out... There's a couple little Allens right here. One here, and one down here. And that releases these upper and lower kingpins on the steering knuckle. So I'm going to pull those out real quick on either side. Pull out these two screws here, attaching this front bumper to the roll cage. And there's two more screws underneath down here that I'm going to take out real quick. And I forgot to mention that I'm also going to be removing the wheel hexes. Um, I had put on, when I first bought this truck, all my plastic wheel hexes were stripped out. And I put on Team Associated uh, clamp-on aluminum hexes. So I'm going to remove those as well. And then as far as the kingpins go on the upper and lower part of the steering knuckle, after you remove the small Allen keys, or Allen studs on either on the top and the bottom here of the, of the uh, spindle, you just need to grab a hold of these with a pair of pliers and you can easily pull them out. Oops, there goes one. 
Alright, so I pulled the front bumper off of it, and I put the screws back into the holes just for now, and I'm going to put those that off to the side so I don't lose anything on that. I pulled out the king pins here so I can pull the steering knuckle off on either side. And the side looks like it already fell off on its own, just with gravity. There is our broken uh, CV there. That's that up pretty good. Yeah, that baby is chewed up pretty good there. It looks like my Allen wrench is still holding everything together. Alright, now I got the other side pulled out from the driver's side, and it's, it's still holding together, so uh, I'll put this baby in the toolbox and keep her for a spare. Just in case, someday, somewhere down the line I might need one. Alright, so, the next thing I'm going to take apart is this little plate right here. I'm going to loosen up these two screws, and that's going to be able to, uh, that's just taking off this little plastic cover, which is a keeper for the hold down pins. Uh, for the front A arms. Alright, so plastic cover is removed. Reveals this little uh, nice piece of aluminum holding these A arm pins in place. Don't necessarily need to take the A arms off, but it looks like they're coming off anyways. Alright, those didn't necessarily need to come off, but since they're off, they're off. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out these four screws one, two, three, and four. And that's going to separate the front half of this differential. Alrighty, so I got all the screws loose here on the front differential. And man, I, am, I tell you, I am so happy that I bought a screw kit for this thing. Because this is after the second time of taking this thing apart, these screws have just about had it. Um, I didn't think I was going to be able to get them undone. Alright, so there is the front differential cup. Well greased. I greased that up uh, last time that I tore it apart. Yeah, so once again, back to the screws. I highly recommend getting a screw kit because these babies strip out in a second. I mean, the whole front differential just pulls right out of here. And out she comes. Alright, so off camera, I took off, went and cleaned up some of the grease here. Uh, next thing I need to remove are these four screws here, these four Allens, uh, to separate this ring gear from this differential cup. Um, I also bought a Viterra Twin Hammers bearing kit too, so I'm going to be replacing all the front end bearings at the same time um, while I'm doing all this. And you know, just for craps and giggles, I just opened up the screw kit to take a look inside to see what all they gave me. Looks like they gave me three brand new Allen wrenches, which is pretty sweet. You can always use more Allen wrenches. See the differential screws in here. Whole stack of lock nuts and whatnot. Yeah, this is good. I'm happy to get this. I'll be happy to replace all these uh, stock screws on here with these nice stainless steel screws. At least I won't have to worry about the head stripping out so easy. Although this part is a bummer. These little differential screws here um, for putting this ring gear back onto the differential cup. The camera's not focusing on it. These are actually Phillips head screws. That's a kind of a bummer right there. That's a bummer that it's not focusing on it either, but regardless, these are Phillips. I'm kind of reluctant about using these. I might reuse the, uh, man, I don't know. I might reuse the stock ones. I uh, don't know about these Phillips. Bad luck with Phillips. All right, so front differential cup. I got the four screws out of there. And like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pull this apart because this is all JB welded together. So I might have to do this off camera. All right, I am pretty thrilled about that. I was able to pull that apart uh, with a little bit of pressure. I was able to get that baby apart. Pretty happy about that. 
inside is still all goobed up with the uh, with the putty. All the planetary gears are JB welded together in there. And of course my camera's not focusing on it. That's awesome. There's a little bit of the JB weld left over here. Alright, so that's off. That's a good part. Now I can go ahead and start, uh, I needed to reuse this ring gear. I didn't order a new, uh, I didn't order a new ring and pinion gear from a Viterra. I figured the stock one would work for the moment. I was trying to be, uh, um, budget friendly as possible. Um, I did have on my order list a whole set of metal transmission gears and a, a new ring and pinion and metal rear axle and uh, I was going to go metal from front to back. but. Uh, once I seen the final price tag, I was like, oh, maybe I should just order what I need. So I ordered what I needed, and uh, I'll start putting that together. And I should mention, as far as the ring gear goes, all I need to do is pull out this little pin on the side. These are some more of those cheap pins that I was talking about. Uh, pull this little pin out, remove that washer, and slide this uh, dog bone drive shaft out drive off the side of the transmission. Alright, so that little broken out drive is off. I pulled the bearing off the back edge of it. And here's what I have left, just the ring gear. And I've got two brand new bearings here from Boom Racing, some sealed bearings I'm going to put in. And I'm going to start putting this differential cup together, or pull this out, and start assembling this stuff. Alrighty, so be forewarned, if you're going to use JB Weld on your front differential, you're probably gonna have a hell of a time getting it back apart again. Got some planetary gears here. All nice and bent from trying to pry it apart. Another set of planetary gears, another bevel gear. Another bevel gear buried inside. Yeehaw, trashed. Since we're looking at this mess, let's look at these, uh, let's look at these outdrives. Look how thin this stock Outdrive is from WL Toys compared to this guy. Maybe that's not a good definition. Maybe I should put it up against this one. Yeah, WL Toys one is pretty cheap compared to the Viterra one. All right, so there is the old differential gut cup. I had to cut it apart to get all the JB weld out of there in order to salvage a few parts. I don't care about those bevel gears. I don't care about those planetary gears. I mainly wanted to salvage the pin and the washer from the inside um, just because the washer, believe it or not, that came on the WL toys was just a little bit wider. Um, then the little washer, see those are the little washers that came with the Viterra kit. And that washer right there is the one from the WL Toys, as well as this one right here. Alright, so this is a new Viterra uh, differential cup, a new Boom Racing bearing, and the Viterra um, outdrive. And now all I have to do is add that washer, and I'm going to replace the uh, um, stock pins that we're going through here. Uh, with the ones that came from the Viterra kit. Uh, that way I know that they're stronger than the stock WL toys. So right now I'm going to put the final washer on here and put the other pin in here. And now um, after that I won't be installing the new planetary gears which are right there and the new bevel gears. I am just going to be putting in this locker in its place. So uh, let me get this part taken care of and I'll be right back. Alright, so I got that washer in place down there and the pin is in place. I'm making sure that the pin is even with this uh, four-way groove here on the differential cup. And then I'm going to take my locker, which is right here, and it lines up, make sure it lines up with the hairpins and make sure that these uh, four square parts line up with the grooves and install like that. Just like so. That is one half locked in place.
And I'm just going to assemble, assemble this other half. Alright, so I've got the gasket reinstalled. I have the ring gear reinstalled. And I put the four stock screws back in. And I'm going to go ahead and finish tightening these down. Alright, that baby's all buttoned back up. I'm going to go ahead and slide this up. Uh, whoops. I'm going to pick that up off the floor, apparently. Alright, off back up off the floor. Got a little bit of dog hair on it. So it's going to have to be somewhat clean before I stick it back in the, in the housing here. One second. Well, alright, I got the differential back into the front differential cup. The other half of the differential cover is sitting in there, a casing is sitting in here. And I just dug up the four replacement screws to go into the differential from this stainless steel uh, Viterra screw kit. So let's, uh, let's get this part slapped in and these screws put back on and start tightening this mess down. And I really don't want to say anything, I don't want to jinx myself, but so far all, all of these Viterra twin hammer parts are mating up perfectly with the WL Toys 10428 parts. So all the differential assemblies and half shafts and all that good stuff, that seems to be fitting together perfectly so far. Alright, so we got the front differential cover back on, or gear case back in place, and all that's left to do is to tighten down the four screws. Alright, so the front differential is completely reassembled. We have all the four screws tightened back down in there. Um, in hindsight or retrospect, I should have taken apart the rear outdrive shaft there, or the pinion shaft, um, going back and replacing the bearing on that, but I plan on upgrading to an aluminum uh, front differential cover and aluminum transmission cover and aluminum differential or uh, rear axle and uh, steel drive shafts along uh, through the middle there so when I go and do that part when I go go to do the upgrade that's when I'll swap out the bearings back there I'm also going to get a uh, actual Viterra uh, ring and pinion for this as well later on down the line uh, so for now I'm going to start putting together these front A arms alright so the A arms are somewhat stuck back in place I just put the pins back through the hole a little bit there and then uh, pulled out these drive shafts or dog bones. Viterra was nice enough to give uh, brand new pins with these. I'm going to put these off to the side since I'm using uh, team associated pins uh, through my existing spindles. And while I'm in here I'm go going to replace these bearings as well on the steering knuckle with some boom racing uh, sealed ball bearings. And just food for thought, when you're replacing these bearings, there is a bigger bearing on the back side and a smaller bearing on the front. And when it comes to the bearings, there is a whole bunch of different bearings with different size inner and outer diameters. So you want to make sure that you match up your bearings accordingly uh, so that you have a complete set as far as uh, bigger ones and smaller ones. Make sure that you're using the right ones. bigger bearing needs to slide all the way up to the top of the shaft right up here so you want to make sure that you have the right inner diameter on that alright so I just went ahead and I buttoned up this passenger side off camera um, I haven't put together the driver side yet um, I have the king pins back in on the upper and lower I put the allen set screws back in on the upper and lower part of the uh, steering knuckle the one problem that I'm going to run into here, and this is something that I feared, I've heard uh, through the grapevine that the WL Toys have more front suspension than the Twin Hammers uh, does. So you can see that that dog bone is coming out of the socket there. And I'm going to try to compensate that by screwing this tie rod end in uh, for the uh, cantilever front suspension. I'm going to try to close this gap a little bit and see if I can bring this A-arm up a little bit, uh, forcing that dog bone in back into the socket. Um, hopefully that works or else I might be in a little bit of trouble here. Alright, well I just cranked this end link down all the way towards me, cranked it down as tight as it would go, and that appears to have brought that uh, drive shaft back up into the uh, into that output shaft there, or into that uh, out drive. So yeah, I probably just lost uh, a little bit of suspension travel there, but 
my drivetrain is going to be a, a whole lot more solid. Um, so in the long run, I can deal with a little bit less travel if I have a solid drivetrain. So I guess that is a sacrifice I'm going to have to make on this one. Uh, the only part that really doesn't jive are these uh, dog bone half shafts or drive shafts. They're just not quite long enough. So you will have to sacrifice a little bit of suspension travel, unfortunately. But as far as the gearbox or the front uh, differential goes, all that stuff went right back in without a problem. Uh, nothing was too loose, nothing was too tight. It was perfect. Um, so let's go ahead and finish buttoning up this side and uh, tightening down this turnbuckle here and these end links and uh, get this baby back on the trail. And once you get the half shaft or drive shaft installed into here, you're probably going to want to pull out this A-arm pin uh, to just to make it a little bit easier to slide uh, this uh, spindle here back through the steering knuckle. Alright, so this side is all back together and all I need to do is reinstall the kingpins on the upper and lower and then put in the two Allen set screws. They go in right here and right here. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. And when you're taking these things apart, in all reality, you do not need to remove these set screws all the way. You can leave them in a little bit, uh, just so you don't have to worry about losing them. Oops. Kingpin. And if I had a tripod, this would be a lot easier. So we got a kingpin on the bottom, kingpin on the top. Get those back into place, and then just tighten down these set screws. You don't have to over tighten these, just tighten them down until they stop. It's a pretty snug fit in there, so no worries about Loctite or anything like that. They're not going to come out. All right, well, that side is back together. And since I'm running out of film time, I'm kind of pushing my limits. I'm going to go ahead and start putting this front end back together. All right, so we got the aluminum uh, spacer back on there, or keeper on there. I'm going to put this, uh, actually, that's just the, the rest of the uh, spacer for the front A arms there. And I'm going to put this little keeper back in place. Forgive me for uh, having a brain fart on what that's called. Alright, so the little keeper's back in place. And now to install the front bumper. Alright, she's all back together. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, I had to cut it short. And I'm a little disappointed with the front suspension and a little bit worried about those end links. Or not the end links, but the drive shaft. So we will find out on the first run. Alright, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is Jim from JCRC. Click like and subscribe. Share with your friends. All that good nonsense. Y'all have a great day. Thanks again. We'll see you.